We saw in Craig Denecker's garden that probably the highlight of it were those awesome pavers that he created. They were kind of like hourglass shape. So we need to create something along those lines. And what we have got is our polystyrene, because that we're going to use, because it's very difficult with creating beautiful shapes and lines to use boxing or even masonite. First up, we need to decide how big our paver is going to be. So um, what we need to do, get a pencil in hand, and we're just going to draw a figure of eight. So we can all kind of do that. Figure of eight, there you go. And then from here, we are then gonna take from the top and the bottom circle, take these two and allow them to join, just like that. And take that one and allow it to join. And there we've got our basic shape of our paver. Now, you know what, there are no rules in this. There really aren't. I mean, you can, you can do whatever you wanted. If you wanted a little guy um, that was only kind of that big, well, you can do that too. Of course, next up we need our good old faithful jigsaw. Garth, and I'm gonna give you the honors, please. Um, I'll make the little incision. All right, off you go. Awesome. Okay. Lovely stuff, Garth. So there we have it, and bang, out he comes. And we have what we took out. I don't know what we could use this for, but I'm sure we'll find a use for it somehow. And here we have our basic mould. For the hang of it, should we do another smaller one? Yeah, why not? Okay, let's, let's check how my hourglass looks this time. Uh, here we go. Voila. So, we've now got our excellent moulds. And you know what the thing is with this garth? Is that if you take them out carefully, um, you can use it over and over and over again. Right, next to go, let's go and get that mixture sorted. Okay. Okay, Garth, we ready for our mixture? We're going with the 211. That's correct, yeah. Okay, and then, folks, remember we're going with two river sand, one stone, and one cement. That's in the ratios and the volumes. Obviously, we're using buckets. If you wanted to mix more pavers and if you had more molds, then obviously you could use a wheelbarrow as your volume of ratio. But depending on how many you want to mix, just remember to reduce then your ratio size. So in other words, it might be a bucket or it might just even be a smaller bucket. Also, because the pavers aren't that big, we're using a 13 millimeter stone instead of the 19 millimeter stone. And be careful when you are going to your hardware store and you do order that because nine times out of 10, I think they're going to give you the 19 mm -hmm. more. <laughs> and then it makes your life a little bit more heavier and more difficult. Okay, let's hit it, Garth. Okay, and we want one bucket of cement. Okay, Garth, you happy with that? I'm happy with that mixture, Tanya. Nice, okay. Here we go. Let's add in some water. Okay. All right. <laughs> Ooh, looking lovely, Garth. Oh, lovely mix, Tanya. What I'm loving about it is the fact that we are going to get that smooth consistency. Um, and that's the finish. And ultimately, folks, how thick is it? Well, we're back to our yogurt. Thick. Greek yogurt, that's what we want. And you can see, just by putting the spade on it and pulling it back, that's the finish that we're gonna have on our pavers, mm -hmm. and that's just gonna be 100% perfect. Yeah. Okay, let's get it into that bucket, God. That's enough to go. God, I'm not so strong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Folks, just to recap, remember, we had the big piece of polystyrene. We then made a figure of eight and used a jigsaw just to cut that out. We've now put a level board underneath it, which is going to be our main platform because remember, we always need something level underneath it to be, be able to create the paver. We've now done our mixture. We've got our concrete mixture ready. We've used one stone, one cement, and two parts of sand. And now, let's do it. Okay, go for it. Ooh, this is nice. Remember folks, things to look out for and that are gonna help you to get even smoother pavers is take your little trowel, 
poke around near the edges, just on the margin, um, because all that's going to do is make sure you're getting rid of all the little air pockets. And, and then take the flat edge of your trowel and then just push it in, following the curves. And that's why I prefer the rounded trowel for this rather than a pointed trowel. Okay, we're getting it pretty smooth now. Final bit, when you're starting to deal with an area as wide as this um, and bigger volumes, it's ideal to get something like a straight edge. Now, we've just got a piece of pine here. You can get proper straight edges from your hardware store, depending in, on big projects. But really, folks, for this kind of DIY, this will be perfect. And all you want to do is start from your furthest end. And as you go along, you're just going to get a nice, smooth finish and most importantly, level finish. So move it along, little forwards and backwards motions. There we go, and what happens is, because it's nice and liquid, it just moves and takes the shape, almost like osmosis, you know? Excellent. Okay, happy with that? Smoothing off. You might be thinking, well, Tanya, why on earth are you going to all this trouble? Because this actually is going to be the underside of the paver. Well, we're actually just giving you some options here. Because, yes, the underside is going to be smooth and it's going to take on the characteristics of the wood. But if we are wanting to have some options working for us, then, yes, just smooth this guy off completely. If you're in a hurry and you don't really mind and you're happy with the finish that the wood's going to give you, then this can just basically stay as rough as you want. So, finally... All we're going to do is take the sponge, just neaten off the edges, and notice that we've got our concrete mixture going right flush with our polystyrene. That's really important because that gets your levels. Cool, Garth. Are you happy? I'm very happy, Tanya. Looks great. Our moulds are here, concrete mixture in. We are good to go. All we have to do now is leave it to dry. Right. Gonna take about three days and we should come back and be ready to take these moulds off. Okay guys, so our pavers are nice and dry. We can see the change in colour. Garth, it's time to get them out of our polystyrene frame. Okay. So I'm gonna cut down here. We're just using a knife with a serrated edge just to cut it out. There we go, one over there, one over there. And remember, we want to be able to reuse these, so try and make as few cuts as possible. Oh, gorgeous, Garth. There we go. How are we doing that? Look, beautiful. And then this guy should be able to come all the way out. There we go, lift your end there. Aha! Hey presto! Here we got our hourglass beautiful pavers. Looking lovely, nice edges to it. Now folks, if you wanted to finish this off even further, what you could do is put a slurry on top of it. Now the slurry would literally just be in the form of mixing cement, the cement powder with a bit of water and using a brush and just brushing it over. That would give you a smoother look. And I've got this little bench in the garden and you know, we need somewhere to put our feet. So let's put these two little oaks in here, Garth, and I think it'll finish it off quite nicely. First things first, the soil is nice and soft. So I'm just gonna take a little bit out, we'll pop it into the bucket okay. that you've got there. All right, let's take the big boy. Okay, I want the other side. There we go. Add some, and let's give him a bit of a wiggle on your side there. Lovely. And then our little oaky he's left, he's gonna swing in just in the corner here. Check how he fits, Garth. Which way you want to put him? Here we go. Let's put him over here. 